No, folks. Welcome back to Ferox Rank Reviews, and today we're going to talk about a gangster who was on the verge of becoming the ruler of everything he had known. <laughs> a gangster who wanted so much with simply the phrase, the world is yours. And in the end, he did conquer, but he slipped up. At the end, he was gunned. To, at the end, he was forced to by by other gangsters and other you know, law and enforcements of law enforcement. The enforcement of law enforcement. Good guy, I really screwed that one up. Hey, yeah, there's no script on this one, folks. I'm just going as I. I'm just going with the flow on this one. Yeah, okay, fuck it. The punchline is the film I'm reviewing today is Scarface, the 1932 film. Before we get started, I want to say this. Let me answer that question. Yes, that film does exist. A lot of people tend to forget that film exists because of the very popular 1983 film, Scarface, starring the very talented Al Pacino. But what many people didn't realize was that this film was actually a remake. All right? This was a gift from my buddy One Shoot Wonder, because I actually do like this film, and I also like the genre of the film, too. But, I was also looking for the original version that the film was based off on, and wouldn't you know it, that in this copy of the of the Blu-ray, we have the Blu-ray of the film itself, and what's this? What is this? It's another film. And it's not rated R, it's rated PG? By, released by Universal? Uh, and it's a DVD? But look at the font design. It is not the same font design as the Blu-ray. What is this? It's the 1932 version of Scarface. Yes. And here's a bit of a fun fact. It was, the character of Scarface was based on real-life gangster Al, Al Capone. Now, look, I'm not making that up. Just go, stop the video right now and go look it up. Yeah, Al Capone was the basis for the, for the character. In fact, the character's name is, dang, I got queued up on my phone here. So the character's name is Antonio Camante, uh, uh, also known as Tony. Well, so I still only kept the, get the first name down, huh? I mean, in this movie, his, his real name is Antonio Montana, but in this, but in the original version, he's called uh, Antonio Clemente. His sister is Francesca, also known as Cheska. That's one that they kept, right? Let's see. Um, there are other characters, too. Um, oh, here's something. His best friend in this film is actually Chino uh, Rodalio. Uh, and his nickname is Little Boy. Okay, that's a little weird. And then, Oh, here's a fun fact. Uh, it turns out that Boris Karloff, the actor who played the Frankenstein monster, was an Irish gangster by the name of Tom G Ganaffy. <laughs> You know, this is before those films were actually really popular, but you know what? This is a gangster film, so this is going to be loads of fun. Where do we begin with this movie? Well, we mostly begin with a murder, of course. This is a good old, it's a good old-fashioned black-and-white noir film, so of course, and it's a gangland film. It's an Italian gangland movie, so of course we start off with a murder. Oh, joy, oh, joy, oh, joy. And, okay, before I go any further, I should mention this film was actually um, criticized for actually using real-life events that had just happened of recent, like, during the time the film was actually made, because it was heavily influenced by actual events. So, like, um, well, certain gangland murders that actually happened that took inspiration for the film. And, uh, okay. And, by the way, the actor who plays, um, Tony Clemente, what's his name? Uh, Paul, Mo Paul Mooney is a Jewish actor who has actually been nominated many times 
<laughs> and it's actually done well in the in, in the film world, and of course has many great movies under his belt. And to be fair, I'm gonna lie. He actually may put Al Pacino to shame on this version. Yeah, not joking. <clears throat> I mean, here's the thing: while uh, Tony Montana in the remake here is actually just um. It's kind of a crazy person, uh, particularly because he has uh, PTSD. And, of course, um, he actually wound up having a wicked drug problem because of the cocaine. Because in this original, because in this remake, the saying goes, if you're a drug dealer, never get high in your own supply. Unfortunately, Tony Montana did, and uh, we all know how that happened. But, and he became completely unstable and completely crazy. While while Tony Clemente, on the other hand, well, he was just fucking bonkers to begin with. No, I mean, he was already beyond crazy to begin with. So, seriously, it opens up with him actually murdering his old boss, uh -huh, and he actually gets arrested by the police. Uh, and, um, well, of course, he's acquitted huh, because they don't have enough evidence on him. And here's the thing. Every time when Tony actually kills somebody in this version, he actually he whistles a tune. And it's actually not a bad tune, but the thing is, there's no music playing in the background at all. There's just an eerie drone effect, and you just get an eerie silence when he plays it. When he, when he whistles a tune, and it's whistled very menacingly. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, oh, you're dead. You're so fucking dead, man. So anyway, Tony's been taking out the competition for his uh, for his uh, for his uh, boss, uh, and uh, huh? well, okay, his boss has told him to actually don't go too far. And what's uh, what's the business this time? What type of illegal activities are they doing? It's the booze, of course. <laughs> yes, all this is beer and hard liquor. The movie was made during the Prohibition era. Give me a break, all right? I mean, hello, remember during the 1920s uh, and they actually had the Prohibition there? From the 1920s and the 1930s, they had Prohibition and they had a ton of bootleg uh, liquors at the time and bootleg beers which actually refined the liquor industry in this day in this day and age. So, I guess that's one thing they actually did right. Oh, and racing too. Yeah. Yeah, so some good actually came out of this whole thing. So yeah, they're taking or so yeah, basically thanks to Tony was be who's being the muscle, but of course he can't actually. T they pretty much take over the entire south side of the city that they're in, and as for the city they're in, I'm pretty sure it could be Chicago. It's definitely not New York or anything because they say the north side and the south side. So my guess is it's definitely got to be Chicago, <laughs> because hello noir era prohibition, it had to be Chicago. Because if it wasn't Chicago, it'd most likely be in New York City, where they actually had problems with uh, New York City and the flows coming from New Jersey. So, yeah. So, basically, they're just trying to... Uh, so, basically, Tony is basically the strong arm of the entire gang. And, of course, he's just hungry for power. Why? He's hungry for power. Ironically enough, the boss's girlfriend, whose name is Poppy, by the way, who, of course, Tony actually has a thing for, she actually winds up visiting Tony at his place one day, and he actually shows her this one billboard. It's a coffee billboard, but it's actually the first words that actually got Tony's attention. The world is yours. And the bottom portion is just something for the coffee. But it's the world is yours, which is the saying from this movie. Okay? But when you look closely, he's a crazy gangster just trying to make a name for himself in the world of crime. And that billboard is right outside his bedroom window, and he sees it every day and night. That's what gives him the fuel to be the crazy gangster that he is today. Oh, yeah. Johnny, the big boss, uh, actually tells Tony not to go to war with the South, and go to war with the North section. Unfortunately, Tony doesn't listen, and... Well, okay, it turns out some of the guys from the North actually did, uh, trying to actually make their way into the South, actually take up a couple of businesses in the South. Tony made a couple of examples out of it, though. So, gangster-wise, it makes a lot of sense what he did, what he did, why he did what he did. There's also Police Inspector Gennaro, who's actually been on Tony's ass since the very beginning. 
Tony's trying to be good with his with his mother and his sister from Ch Cheska. Unfortunately, Cheska is 18 years old, and she's not exactly a kid anymore, so do the math on that one. And she has kind of a thing for uh for Little Boy. Yeah. So, but the thing is, Little Boy has been uh, has been has been Tony's friends for years, so he doesn't want to actually mess it up. And of course, he's just trying to be a good friend to her. <laughs> actually, if anything, he's kind of acting like a big brother to her as well. But he does actually care about her too. I'm starting. To, you're starting to see what this is ending up. Am I right? <laughs> but of course, he's a ladies' man, so he goes to see a lady every once in a while. Unfortunately, things don't actually go so well where the North Side decides to take up war with the South Side. And this is where shit goes completely insane. <laughs> yeah. Like, literally, like, not even 30 minutes in, we are actually, like, a ton of, like, maybe 20 minutes in, we have tons of gunfights. And it lasts for almost a half an hour, which is, like, nuts. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> the movie, um, anyway, it turns out, like, Poppy goes to see Tony. Tony takes her out to a nice restaurant, so he's going to take her home to Johnny. Uh, he's trying to put the moves on. He's trying to put the moves on her, give or take. I should mention that Tony's secretary is, he doesn't speak really good English. And it's sort of a side joke with the character, but he's kind of a nice guy. And uh, this is a gangster film, and you know something really bad's going to happen to him. So yeah, now that the North and South Side are now at war with each other, it gets worse. And you know, now that I think about it, maybe this movie takes place in Boston amongst all things. I could be wrong. Who knows? I mean, three most likely loca locations of this movie could either be New York City, which is not taking it because there's like a ton of places in New York. Chicago, great place, but most likely it might be Boston. No, because the North and South sides, and we have Irish and Italian gangsters going at it all the time. And hey, lo and behold, most of the time the Italian gangsters always outmuscle the Irish ones. Why? Shit happens. I'm not saying that because I'm actually Italian myself. I mean, I have a little Irish in me, but still. It's just usually what it is in these movies, okay? That's how the formula works. So anyway... Cheska, so anyway, Cheska, little boy, no, no, wait, little boy, Poppy, Tony, and Tony's secretary are actually at a nice little restaurant until some of the guys from the north side actually start gun, actually start going down the restaurant, uh, where of course Tony actually, where of course Tony, Poppy, and, uh, and little boy actually keep all the civilians safe. Uh, well, as much as they could, uh, they tried to keep everybody safe. The little boy actually winds up gunning down one of the one of the one of the shooters. Uh, and this was a drive-by. So he grabs one of their guns, which happens to be a Tommy gun. And Tony, says, and Tony takes a real liking to the Tommy gun. Like, hey, we don't, at least we can, run the, we can run the whole town, eh? Okay, I know that was kind of like a bad thing, but I'm Italian myself, so I can at least get away with that. But that's how these gangsters talk back then. It's ridiculous, yeah. But here's the thing. Tony gets insanely crazy ideas uh, with a Tommy gun. So he gets all the guys back to John's place, uh, to John's casino, uh, John's little place of business. So all the gangsters are all there. They all have a bunch of guns with them, and he actually shows them that they're going to be using these Tommy guns. So, and, you know, it's like, yeah, you see, you see that? See, we're going to use this. We're going to go in the whole town. See, John tells him not to do it, but, of course, Tony is literally high at this point. He's getting a gangster high, not a drug high or anything, not a caffeine high, but a Power high. He's holding the Tommy gun at this point. He's like, yeah, hey, wait a minute. It's like, oh, come on, we're going to run the trail of this. Uh, come on, boys, we're going to wipe all those bastards out. <laughs> so, and of course, Poppy gives him some encouragement. John tells him not to do it. Yeah, Tony doesn't listen. So, Tony and his entire gang basically go invade the north side with the Tommy guns and yeah, they just gun everybody down. It's like nothing but fifteen minutes of like uh, them gunning people down. And one segment, they actually imitate, they actually mimic the Valentine's Day massacre, which is what the which is one of the things this film got flagged for. For those of you who don't know what the Valentine's Day massacre is, this is around the time when Al Capone's men actually dressed up as cops, uh, getting a rival gang, <laughs> arresting a bunch of rival gang members, putting them in front of a, of a wall, having them turn around, and the and, and in the meantime. The gangsters 
gunned down the rival gang members while they're dressed as cops with Tommy guns. Yeah, they actually imitate that entire sequence, but it's done in shadow format, which is actually a little bit more effective than I think about it, but hey, it worked. But hey, it worked. <laughs> so yeah. So, and uh, what happens to Gaffy in his bed? Well, Gaffy thinks he's safe. Nope. Gaffy is actually uh, Gaffy's with the rest of those guys trying to strategize what they're going to do with Tony. You know, going to do with Johnny and Tony. While Tony finds out where the hell he is, so Tony's men all go to where they are, which is a bowling alley. And we see Boris Koloff actually going to bowl a few good games. How do I know this? Well, I haven't bowled in a long time, so um, yeah, I gotta get back into doing some bowling, you know, for recreational purposes. Anyway, and to be fair, the way he's executed is actually kind of a brilliant way, and the way it's brilliantly shot. So, so Carlo, so all of Tony's guys actually get get their guns ready to gun him down. So while Karloff's character, while Karloff's character actually bowls and. The camera follows the bowling ball, huh, and we hear all the gunshots go off. And when the second the gunshots all stop, we see the ball hit the pins, and he gets a strike. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. That's, um, he gets a strike, and he gets executed. You know what? I'm not going to lie. This is an old... i got to admit, this movie made in the 1930s, I like the way it was edited. That's one way to kill somebody off in the movie. Brilliant editing, my friends. Unfortunately, John gets a little jealous of power. If you remember the remake, how like Tony's, how Montana's, how Montana's old boss actually didn't like the way he was actually, you know, growing in power. Same thing actually kind of happened here. However, Finchin, however, Cheska was actually in a okay. So Johnny, Johnny, Poppy, Tony, Little Boy, and Francesca are actually all at this dance party, and Tony sees that. Well, okay. Jessica tries to get little John to you know, gets a little boy to dance with her. He refuses because she's Tony's uh, sister, and of course she starts dancing with somebody else, and he gets annoyed by it. So he's like, "Oh shit, this is not good." Tony sees it and he not and he tells the guy to get lost. So he takes Jessica home and tells her to go straight home and slaps her around a little bit. Tell her he doesn't want to see her like that. And okay, let's face it: for most of us who are big brothers, we kind of understand what he was doing. And of course, he has a huge lust and hunger for power. And seeing how his little sister is acting, he doesn't like the way it's going. Yeah. If you ever watch any Italian gangster film, it's pretty much the same thing in those movies. So typical stuff. <sighs> Tony decides to go take a nice, take a decent drive home. Except there's a car waiting to do a drive by on him. So he races away from the car, and it crashes it, and they both crash. He gets slightly injured, but he's all right. He calls his buddy little boy up, and he finds out it had to be Johnny who actually had done it. So he, he's suspicious that it was Johnny who did it. So he gets somebody to actually call him, to call Johnny at a specific time. So while little while that's about to happen, little boy and Tony go see Johnny. And wouldn't you happen to know it? The call came in, and well, Johnny just waves it off. And that's how Tony knew it was actually him. So Tony tells him, you messed up, man. Messed up. So, rather than kill him himself, Tony just walks out of the room. We see little John actually couldn't take his hand, to put his hand into his jacket. And we see just Tony walking out as gunshots go off. Yep, now Tony is the king of the both north and south of the city. Of the booze and liquor business. And, well, to be fair, this portion of the movie goes by a little bit more quicker than... Well, this one, which really draws everything out. Uh, yeah, I like the, um, yeah, here's the thing. The original version, they don't tend to draw things out. They just get straight to the fucking point. While this one tend to draw everything out, would make it almost like a three-hour long movie. Yeah, this, the original one just cuts the bullshit. Anyways. Tony later, anyway, Tony uh, actually makes a trip to go down south uh, to Florida. They secure some more booze. Well, little boy and Cheska get more and more closer, and they get married. Tony actually gets back up north, and uh, his mother tells her tells him that she's worried about Cheska because she's been been missing for a while. 
So she, he actually finds out where her apartment is. So he goes to her apartment only to have Little Boy open the door. In a fit of rage, Tony shoots Little Boy. Yeah. Cheska actually curses him out and then runs away. While Tony is completely distraught with like what he had just did. While, Gen- while that happened, Gennaro actually gets... Uh, while Gennaro actually gets the information he needs and gets a warrant to go for arresting him. <laughs> so the cops actually come by to try to arrest Tony. Tony's been actually trying to gunning him down. <laughs> so, but unfortunately, okay, they try to drive the cops away. Well, okay, Tony's secretary gets shot. And he dies answering the phone, finally getting his right line. <laughs> and it's Poppy. She's trying to actually find out if Tony's okay. Tony is getting complete distraught. He doesn't even bother answering the phone. He just puts it down. Jessica comes in trying about to kill Tony, but here's the thing. Tony notices all the cops outside, and he starts to get more and more crazy. He snaps out of it and goes completely crazy. He starts to shoot at them. So, yeah, and Cheska actually joins in on his madness. Um, okay. What? No, seriously, what? Yeah, Cheska and Tony are now fighting off the police. Only Cheska gets badly injured, and she dies from her injuries. Tony tries his best to continue fighting, but... They toss in tear gas, which also blinds him, and Gennaro and his men actually kick in the door to actually shoot Tony. He's badly injured. He's like, come on, man. I can't go on like this. No. Not like this. No. And he runs out the door, and pe- and the cops just basically gun him down, and he dies right there in the gutter. But the camera pans in on Tony, and it goes right up to the sign, zooms in on the part where the world is yours. And that is the original Scarface, my friends. A very dark film, but also very entertainingly dark film. Hmm. It's actually a pretty decently good gangster film. And okay, wait a minute. Before I go any further, I gotta mention something else. The DVD on this, uh, the DVD actually had something on it I wasn't expecting. An alternate ending, which was even more darker. Yeah. And what the original ending was? Here it is. Tony actually doesn't get doesn't actually want to leave in the building. He actually wants to getting arrested by Gennaro. He gets taken to court. <laughs> but he gets taken to court and he's tried for God knows how many counts of murder of innocent people and gangsters. Like there's a huge body it's a fucking huge body count. <laughs> Alright. And the trial takes place in November, and he's soon can, I mean, the trial takes place in late, in early December, and he's being executed in late December. I mean, honestly, the whole thing started, like, the year prior, and when Tony took over, like, cutting down everybody, it was during Valentine's Day, of all things. Hence why they redid the Valentine's Day Massacre. So, he's tried and sentenced to death by hanging, and we see him get hanged at the very end, in a very silent way, credits pop up, movie's over. You know what? I kind of see why they actually changed the ending, because that ending was just way too dark and depressing. But this one, where he's gunned down the street, and where he's gunned down, and he dies in the gutter, it's much more symbolic in this version. So, yeah, that was the original 1930s Scarface. So, do I actually recommend people watch this? You know what? If you like this version of Scarface, you might actually like the 32 version. I'm not kidding. Seriously. Oh, seriously. Paul Mooney does his, actually does his, does really great in the role of playing an Italian gangster. And you want to know what the craziest part of this whole movie is? You want to know who was a huge fan of this movie? And I'm not making this up. All right? You want to know who loved this movie? And actually owned a physical copy of this movie back in the 1930s? Like, he actually bought an actual film reel so he could watch the movie whenever the hell he wants to? Get this. Al Capone loved this movie. Not even joking. He knew the character was based on him, but he loved Paul Mooney's acting. It was so great. He just loved the movie. So he actually bought an actual film reel from the movie theater he went to to, so he could watch it at home. Seriously, the guy that the character was based off on loved the movie. 
all because he loved the actor who, portray who portrayed the character. That is amazing to know. I'm not making this up. This is actually a real thing that really did happen. No joke. Oh, man. Go figure, right? One of the most notorious gangsters in U.S. history saw a movie where it was the character was based on him, and he loved it so much he actually bought himself a copy. This was in the 1930s, was that was impossible. But you know what? If Al Capone liked it, and all of America also loved it too. But the critics were very harsh on it because of all the parallels that were actually happening in real life and everything. The movie actually made over five hundred, actually made over six hundred thousand dollars back in the nineteen thirties. And here is the thing: that is ex that is a lot of fucking money back then. So, oh yeah, enough said right there. I mean, today that would be like what over hundreds of millions of dollars by today's standards. Oh yeah. But it was critically panned and didn't actually get the VHS release until, until like the 1980s. So, where it is now considered a classic gangster film. So, do I actually recommend people watching this movie? Well, I'll put it this way. If the real Al Capone actually liked the movie and all of America liked it back then, watch it yourself and you be the judge of that. That's all I'm going to say. Watch it yourself and you be the judge of that. Huh. <sighs> That's crazy. But you know what? Next time, it's my 100th episode, my 300th episode, and it's about time I go back to watching another Godzilla film. And that was by total accident right there. And what's the Godzilla film? The original Gojira. Tune in next time for the 300th episode and Gojira. Until then, Y'all take care now.